Hey, you guys. Hey, what's up, co-ed Ken folks? That's right. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to come to you guys because, of course, you can see we have a special guest. And so we have Justin from Married at First Sight season. What season was it? 15? 15? I think yeah. it's 15. Yeah. 15. Yeah. Um, San Diego. So, yeah, Justin, Um, you know, yeah, y'all know we rock with Justin. Justin rock with us. So y'all know we've interviewed him and that video did pretty it good. Did you know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, um, great. I heard that Merit at First Sight put it in their Facebook group. So yeah. They did. Oh yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, they did. It's so yeah. I didn't know that <laughs> so um so Justin, it's uh first it's good to see you. Yes, um Justin. I know it's something that you wanted to share with, you know, our audience, our kin <laughs> folks, um, something that you recently discovered. But before we get into that tell us what's been going on with your brother uh you know i've just i've been living life i've been healing um i've been reflecting you know learning more about myself uh just kind of starting over to really to be honest you know uh ever since i've come up with this discovery my entire life has made so much more sense now mm-hmm. so just trying to unlearn a lot of stuff uh getting back in shape uh actually getting in the best shape of my life um working a great job my relationship with caitlin is solid you know uh we have a great foundation uh my animals they're spoiled as usual they're back there overall yeah things have been good i can't complain that's okay. great that's great yeah. good, babe. Uh, so you want to go ahead and tell the people what you, you know you want to share with them about what you discovered about yourself yes yes so you know after uh during married at first sight um when the show was airing, uh, I started, you know, going to the doctor. Actually, let me let me go back. Actually, Caitlin came to me. My girlfriend came to me, and she's like, "Babe, uh, can I talk to you about something? And I, I really need you to just listen. Don't react, because I'm very reactive, as you guys know, and I'm working yeah. on that." Okay. And she says, um, "Would you mind getting your T levels checked?" And I was just like, you know, yeah, I don't care. Why not? You know, I ain't, I feel like I felt like I didn't have anything to worry about. And can so, you explain what T my, levels for? I'm sorry. Oh, can you sorry. explain T level? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah before you get levels. started, before you get started, just yeah, a lot of these people, mainly women, don't know what T levels are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We know what it is, but they don't. <laughs> so, it's kind of like, you said, explain yeah. to them what's going on. Okay, you're right. That's fair. That's fair. So, T, when I say T levels, my testosterone. So, you know, Caitlin came to me and she was like, you know, let's get your testosterone looked at. Uh, she works in the medical field um, and I trust her. You know, she has great intentions when it comes to our relationship and me as a person. And I was like, yeah, why not? So, you know, I got my free testosterone levels check. I got my regular testosterone levels check. And uh, at first I started with the online company. They wouldn't prescribe me anything. They thought I had a brain tumor. So then wow. I had to go get it. Yeah. I had to go get an MRI to make sure I didn't have uh, a brain tumor. Everything came out to be fine. So then they uh, referred me to an endocrinologist, a specialty. Uh, and they basically ran this test called um, a, a, a karyotype. A karyotype is where they pull, we have 4 billion or maybe 4 trillion cells in our body um, attached to our DNA. And right. so they pull five of mine uh, and each one of them came back with an additional chromosome. And they was, uh, I was diagnosed with what they call a uh, Kleinfelter syndrome, which is a genetic disorder, something that I had at birth and didn't even know it. So it's right. so rare that roughly 150,000 men in the United States have it. Wow. So I was like, Kleinfelter's first thing I said is black people don't get that shit. You know, that's exactly <laughs> what I said. Yeah. <laughs> and they laughed. They were just like, you know, it's not inherited from your parents. You know, it's a genetic error. So mm. what Klein Phelps was, was is he explained to me that, you know, men have 46 chromosomes, men are an X, and I have 47. So I have an extra X, so I'm an XXY, mm. which means uh, my body doesn't naturally produce testosterone. So that's why everything has been hard. One of the symptoms uh, that I've noticed when I was on Married at First Sight 
was my emotions was all over the place. You know, I right. thought I was being vulnerable because I was like, yeah, I don't mind crying. But oh. when you're un- correct, when you're undiagnosed with Klinefelter's, it is 100 percent impossible to emo- uh, regulate your emotions. You have often outbursts, you your clarity as far as like what makes sense to you doesn't necessarily make sense coming out. So a lot of times when I would just ramble and kind of go all over the place in my head, it was making sense, but it wasn't being produced as I was coming out. Uh, you don't gain muscle mass. And then what what testosterone you have left, your body, my body was just working with that. So playing college ball, the reason college was so challenging for me, um, you know, they, they say some people have a learning disability. Uh, I, I would say mine's I have some type of, I don't have a learning disability. I just catch on slower than others, which is why I will work so much harder than others. Um, so that's a little bit about it. Uh, when I got diagnosed with it, you know, my world was upside down. I was processing things. Uh, I mean, I went all the way back to grade school to the times where I was playing high school ball. And I'm like, I'm out working these dudes. How am I not producing any results? Right. Um, and so now uh, basically what happens next is, you know, they told me what it was. I got more blood drawn. They put me on uh, testosterone replacement therapy. So any man that's on crying filters has to be on testosterone replacement therapy. I was ignorant because I didn't realize how important testosterone was for a man specifically. You know, I heard of it. Mm-hmm. You know, they be like, oh, yeah, you know, testosterone. But you when you think about the science behind it. It explains why I don't have facial hair. You know, I have no facial, I have no body hair. You know, I mean, I got it up under my armpits, but other than that, this is, you know, 34 years roughly. Um, So that's pretty much what it is. But the reason I really wanted to come on here because when you look at my behavior on Married at First Sight, San Diego, it just makes sense now. Everything just makes sense. Wow. Yeah. Uh, when you said about the outbursts and, and uh, the outbursts and, you know, the crying and, and the emotions being all over the place, it makes so much sense now because uh I'm not trying to make it by myself. Because as I told you once before, Jason, Justin, uh, that I was on testosterone shots. OK. Mm-hmm. And she can tell when I was on shots because I get real agitated, real aggressive. Same. Yeah. So. uh Sometimes I had, you know, actually I had to kind of back off the shots because it was affecting me at work sometimes because I was kind of snapping at my coworkers or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, so sometimes, you know, it depends on how much testosterone they give you. You got to kind of keep in mind that, okay, I'm on these shots. I got to kind of reel mm-hmm. my emotions in. So, you know, hopefully people won't take offense if I'm snappy or mm-hmm. mad or angry. So that's mm-hmm. one thing I had to deal with. And with your testosterone being so low, I am surprised that you did what you did, playing ball, playing sports, getting through school. Because, you know, like you said, yours is real, real low. So that's yeah. still very impressive for, to get through life like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you know, he explains to me kind of the, uh, the high end, you know, for somebody around my age. Around my age, I should be around, you know, Mid 600s, 700s, 800 is a bit too high, you know. Um, And then on the low end, in my 50s, maybe even hitting my 50s, I should be at the, you know, 400, 300 range. And that's when you have to start getting on it consistently because you just get older. I was at 50. I was at 52. Wow. Five, two. Five, two. two. Like five, two. And so, like, you know, my, my doctor was surprised. He was like, you know, have you ever been depressed? And I was like, nah. And he was like, how have you gotten through life the way you? And I was like, right. God, I said, God got me, you know, right. and that, that's right. the that's the honest truth. Right. So, you know, I definitely agree with you. I've noticed, you know, since I've been on testosterone replacement therapy, um, when I first started, they gave me uh, 100 milligrams. It was 50 uh, the day I got diagnosed, and et cetera. Then two weeks later, it was 100. I was on 100 for about about two and a half months. Um, but I accidentally, they accidentally gave me 200, Mm. um, and my body reacted, it reacted well, but my body got used to it too quickly. And so when they put me back on the 100, I was constantly snapping and Mm. Kayla came to me and she's like, babe, you are like ruthless right now. And I was like, me, she's like, yes, like we had to sit down. And so when I was telling my doctor about the error that we had made, 
he decided to put me at the 150 and let my body kind of see how it responds now. So far, the 150 that I'm on, uh, it's really good. Man, there's a lot of clarity. Mm. Um, I always tell people like my cognitive clarity, my cognitive processing, everything is there now. You know, right. whereas before I struggle with it, you know. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's a lot of processing that I'm doing, you know, when it comes to it. It's funny, um, when the show ended, uh, somebody in the comments had mentioned Kleinfelters and, you know, she had put up a, a whole link about it and whatnot. And I remember taking it personal. I was just like, black people don't get that shit. I just yeah. how, how was with that. And I had somebody DM me and I remember taking it personal. I was just like, did you go to medical school? You know, are you a doctor? Why are you trying to diagnose me? Get out of my DM. Right. And come to find out, you know, that's exactly what it was. Uh, wow. So, yeah. so um, so going back, I know you you may have said it. So they just took blood work and then they automatically went to that because sometimes, you know, for them to try to treat you or find out what's wrong with you, sometimes mm -hmm. it can be very long and tedious. You know what I'm saying? They got to yeah. do this. They got to do that. And sometimes you have to figure out for yourself and say, can you test me for this? So what was the process? Did they just eliminate everything else and just say, yes. hey, is this? Okay. Yes. So after, so it was it was probably six months of going back and forth getting blood drawn. I probably had my blood drawn maybe twelve times. Um, for the for the DNA, the karyotype, they took uh, twelve tubes. And uh, Kleinfelters, you uh, naturally have uh, you you, you uh, what is it called? You're uh, anemic when you yeah. have Kleinfelters. So that's one thing explains why I was always cold. You know, right. I just thought it's because I ain't had no meat on my bones, but now right. it's because you know I'm anemic. Um, where was I going with this? Um, shit, I lost my train of thought. They 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 yeah, took twelve yeah. tubes, you know, and um, so they tested your blood. I guess it's right. Yeah, it's yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. So th it was a process. Uh, the first process was you know getting my blood drawn, and they were just looking at my test. And then when my test, my numbers didn't make sense, and it was elevated between eight and ten in the morning. They were confused. So the first doctor was afraid. He was like, "Nah, I can't." I can't prescribe you any testosterone because you, if you have a brain tumor and we give you testosterone, it can kill you. And I was like, so I was afraid. So then, you know, the second step was going to go get an MRI. Went and got the MRI, uh, didn't see anything. So then uh, Caitlin went with me through all of this. When I say this girl knows her stuff, she right. was speaking their language. Literally, I, honestly, if it wasn't for her, I would have never discovered it. And I think that Western doctors would have given me the runaround. She mm -hmm. came in and she, like I said, she works in the medical field. So she she had a research. We had a little bond of like an old, old person with all the files, <laughs> um, everything in there. And so we went in there and she was like, hey, this is exactly what it is. I, I, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job. And here's the facts why, you know, and then after doing so much research and going to the doctors and constantly getting suggestions here, suggestion there. The first doctor says the, the percentage of you having client felt is like seeing a zebra on the street. Mm. And he just wasn't open to it. Whereas right. the second or the it was like the fourth dollar, the, the specialty, um, immediately he was like, you totally have client felt. But he still wanted to test for it. So I was his first patient uh, with client felt, which is special, you know, because mm. now everybody, you know, every time I go to get a checkup, like they just it's like i'm a project now it's like oh wow right. you know yet alone right. i've never seen a black person with client filters you mm. know um okay. but that's how we got there uh caitlin like i said she went with me throughout the whole process she was my advocate you know she things that i didn't understand or if they try to pull a fast one on me she'll ask questions you know right. some doctors got annoyed most doctors love it. it was like can we hire you mm. <laughs> you know um so that that was really the process right there. Uh, it was just it was roughly about almost a six month process. I started back at the end of um, September. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah. So do you think it was what kind of triggered you to feel? I know you said that Caitlin um, kind of, you know, suggested something. But did you have something in your head to maybe think that something was, you know, what I'm saying a little honestly? I, I'll say when I was in college, I felt because I struggled so hard to catch on to everybody's 100 percent. And I always have to give that 120 percent. 
I would always get frustrated because I couldn't retain information. If you would notice, like on the show, I had a forgetful memory, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I don't know. It, it's just at times. Ah, I'm losing my train of thought again. Sorry. That's no okay. problem. Take That's your okay. time, man. That's OK. So, yeah. Um, well, what was your question again? Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, you know, and I guess you kind of said it, you know, what is it something maybe within you that kind of figured that, yeah. hey, oh, yeah. something not right. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. I will say, yeah, for sure. Um, I felt it in college, but I mainly felt it in basketball. You know, being six eight, most people are like, can you dunk? Can you dunk? Can you dunk? That's the number one question that I get. And yes, I could dunk, but it was a struggle for me to like get there. You know, and I would question like, how come my calf muscles aren't getting big? How come I've been in the gym working on upper body and lower right. body, and my vertical hadn't increased? You know, I was really frustrated when I uh, got diagnosed. Why coaches it never crossed their mind that something was off. Like I'm working out as much as, you know, it was at times where I was in high school, they sent me to work out with the football team uh, because I just wasn't getting it there, you know? Um, and I was really frustrated, but it's so rare. The way, realistically, the way it was explained to me is that if you don't come from a privileged background, you know, if you come from, you know, a background where I'm not gonna say I'm from poverty because I'm not, right. But I'm I'm definitely from a middle class with b basic health care, you know, basic, and if yeah. you don't if, if you don't come from a, a privileged background like Caitlin, Caitlin comes from a great school. You know, she mm -hmm. went to boarding school. Her siblings all went to um, Ivy League schools. And so they have they have a different health care health care for them, whereas they can, you know, get those type of things brought to their attention by doctors where you know i got my appendix removed and so of course blood had to be drawn it could have then came up when i was seven i got my appendix removed whereas that if that was somebody you know with privilege that had that type of health care it would have got caught quit and life would have been much better yeah i always said there's there's a uh, different types of tiers of health care for people you know so yeah uh quick question sure uh, about the testosterone shots did the doctors ever tell you uh where uh is there any side effects with with the shots yeah you know what uh and there is that because yeah, yeah. i dealt with some of the side effects from the shots and i only trying to see if did they tell you about the side effects from the shots. so the beautiful thing about it is that my my, my uh side effects are going to be different from yours uh okay. so typically people with client felses don't have the same um uh, side effects that people that don't have client felt. So men okay. that just has low uh, testosterone and they mm -hmm. get injections may have a completely different reaction mm -hmm. um, because the way I explain it is that the different levels of whatever is in my body along with the testosterone, when right. I'm not taking them, they're fluctuating. They're, they're all over the place. Whereas when I am taking everything is even. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only thing it really you know affects is roughly night sweats. Okay. Um, and when if I if I'm on a lower dosage, it uh it affects my mood. I can like you said, I can be snappy, you right. know, and not realize I'm like I'm not being snappy, but I can. And then right. when I get the higher dose, I can then I can see the bigger picture. Yeah. So there's not too many uh, side effects. Uh, that was one of the things Miguel asked about it because you know he's 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 been through this journey with me. He's been going through okay. It with me. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I'll tell you about that. Um. But yeah, he just he asked me uh, about the estrogen level. You know, he was worried about that. And I, right. I told him, I explained to him that, you know, men with client filters um, don't have to worry about the estrogen uh, increase. Um, and you don't have to worry about the mood swings either. OK, uh, I know when I was getting the shots, I don't know what kind of how much, you know, how much milligrams he was giving me. But when I first got on the testosterone shots, I was real aggressive, but I ate a lot. It made me hungry. Yeah. I ate a lot. I picked a weight. I had energy. Yep. I had exercise. It, it got to the point when people saw me in the street, they thought I was a, a ex football player. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Uh, one guy said, oh, Are you a coach for college? And, no, I just work out. You know what I'm saying? But I had to get off of them because, like I said, they were making me too aggressive. So, yeah, you know, I got off of it for a while. Then I got back on it. When I got yeah. back on the tee shots, uh, a blood pressure got up. It shot my blood pressure up, mm -hmm. so they had kind of dial it back a little bit. And yeah. also, uh, I went. They did a PSA. You know what PSA is when they draw your blood to see if you mm -hmm. got any kind of you know 
But anyway, my PSA levels were kind of high because of the shot. So yeah. they had to go in there and look at my prostate because of the shot, mm-hmm. you know. So there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of people didn't you know, don't know about the shot, you know. Yeah. Like I said, it's going to affect you different because of, of your situation. But yeah. for a normal guy like myself and others, you know what I'm saying, it might affect them the same way it affected me, you know what I'm saying. So I had to get off the shot completely right now. So yeah, so I'm not even on the tee shots no more. So, I see. But, I see. Yeah. But are you on shots or like are, are your shots that you have to go and get them every month, every three months? How does it work? So I get a shot twice uh, twice a month, every two weeks mm-hmm. uh, of 150 milligrams. I get it in my butt, my butt tops. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, I think he said my level should be even around uh, August, September. And then after that, it'll still be every two weeks. Uh, but by the, by the time the beginning of the year uh, starts, I should be uh, dropping down to once a month. And then that'll be my dose. The beautiful thing about being on testosterone replacement therapy is I get it free for the rest of my life, which is nice. Mm. It's also considered a disability, you know. So, for example, if I was to ever lose a job or something, you know, dis- uh, disability will pay me right. until I start working again on top of unemployment and whatever benefits, which is really nice. Um, Let me ask you a question about that. Is it because you have a client? For well, you? that's why I'm about to ask you because can a normal guy with low te- with low testosterone get disability, or is it because of your situation? That's the reason why it's because of my situation. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, because the the thing with client filters, it can affect men differently. So some people it affect intellectually. With me, okay. it mostly affects more of my emotions. So like if I have an outburst at work, um, they can't fire me, you know, because that's part of that disability. You know, if I have if I decide to go back to school, they have to accommodate me because I'm a visual learner um, mm-hmm. and I learn differently from people. But it works for me. And so they they have to. They can't oh, okay. just deny it. where somebody would just low T. They'll just send you to the doctor uh, mm-hmm. to your uh, PCP uh, right. and, you know, have your insurance take care of it. Whereas even I if it. I didn't have insurance, it would cost me 20 bucks to get the, uh, the testosterone. Yeah. OK, because for a while. My insurance stopped covering it, and the nurse, the only way I can get T shots back then was I had to get the shots to myself. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. It's tough, man. It's Look, fun. let me say, it'd be pinching, boy. It take me a minute. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, but, so um, so you say you and Miguel, like Miguel, has kind of helped you through this process. So you know, mm-hmm. you got uh, uh, I'm see, you know, of course, married at first sight. You did gain a friend. So yeah, yeah. yes. So Miguel and I, had, we we've been tight. I've we. So one, let me let me tell you this. One of the things they love about Married at First Sight is uh, in the beginning they asked me who do I feel like I'm going to be more you know friends with, and I was like probably Miguel because it gets me everything. One thing I, I admired about Miguel is that when I would explain myself and all the other cast members would just kind of look at me like they were confused, he'll sort of reiterate exactly what I was trying to say, but he'll simplify versus telling a long story. And I always appreciated that about him. Um, when I told him about the client fields, like I said, I've been between him and my partner, I've been keeping him in the loop because he's in the medical field. So if I experience certain symptoms, I'll shoot him a, a message and be like, yo, I'm starting to feel like this. He'd be like, ask your doctor about this, you know, or if he doesn't know something, Caitlin might know it. Or if Caitlin don't know it, you know, he might know it. So he's been helping me. He's the one that's been helping me through my fitness journey, you know, over the past yeah. two and a half months, you know, I went from bench pressing 225s on each side so you guys saw it, the 245s right and that's the heaviest i've ever lived i was, I was like a kid in a candy store in the gym when i lifted that much you know man um, you could have came down here man i could have trained you man <laughs> i could have ran circles around again brother <laughs> <laughs> look look i was 191 when i stepped on the scale the day i was diagnosed and i stepped on the scale last week and i'm at 210 Oh man, that's good, like, man. Man, I love it. You, you, you bulking up. You bulking up. And that's yes. that's that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bulking up, eating a lot. Um, I I hated vegetables. I love vegetables. I ate squash for the first time yesterday. Squash. Really? Yes. Uh, you from the south and you hate vegetables? Yeah, you had no squash. Uh, broccoli, yep. squash. Come on, man. Yuck. Yep. I I ate vegetables last night, the night before. I ate for a snack. I might eat cauliflower and some dip. Uh, it's it's weird. I'm like, what's happening to me? You know. Oh yeah, you from California? Y'all into all that health stuff? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but 
but like I said, them shots going to change your appetite. It will. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it yeah, has. Yeah, and, and, has. and you're going to see the results from it, man. You're going to have more energy. You're going to bulk up. And you know, like you said, your mood's going to get better. And yeah. I'm glad that, you know, they found out what was going on with you and you taking care of it. You know what I'm saying? So No, I appreciate to- it, man. I definitely yeah, shout out to Caitlin and um Miguel. Yeah. What what part of the medical field is Miguel in? <clears throat> so medical um uh, um gosh, I got tongue twisted for a second. Miguel has his PhD in uh he's a medical writer. So he's the guy that when you pick up your prescription, he gives you all the information about it. He's that oh, guy he that puts out information. Everything. He oh, writes okay. everything out, or if he has to write up an ebook or you know, um anything that's related ebook. Um, anything about the information for the type of medication that you're getting, he's right. that guy. So, you know, typically I'll call a pharmacy and be like, hey, can I take X, Y, and Z? You know, he's the guy that can tell you how what reaction you're going to get if you mix two different types of drugs together. Okay. He's okay. a beast, man. My boy is a beast at what he does. Uh, I respect this game. I do. Okay. Yeah. He's small. He yeah. real small. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, is. He's a, he's a pretty smart dude. <laughs> so, in the future, what's your plans for the future, man? You know, even though you know now you know what's going on with your body, you know, are you planning on getting married soon or five no. years down the road? Or, or are you gonna say, you know what, I'm bulking it up, I'm getting cut, I'm wearing tank tops and short shorts, and I'm going out there <laughs> play the field. What you gonna do, brother? I mean, I started doing that now when I lost my man boobs and I started developing the chest. I was just like <laughs> But let me put this on real quick. I put my Hoosh Daddy shorts on. Like, you looking Not good, your man boobs. <laughs> you, had man, you had man boobs? Yeah. You know, honestly, I didn't think I had man boobs. But when you look at it from a scientific level and you look at the, the body format of a man with client felt, it's just like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, and so over time, you know, I went from having man boobs to developing more of a flat my shoulders have broadened now you know i've picked mm. up a lot more weight in my face that i've noticed yeah um my arms have got huge i can't mm. stand out, stay out of the mirror you know you see how this this, this jacket fit me girl uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, feel, on, you, you feel yourself now huh, bro? <laughs> i am i am just a little bit just a little bit maybe a lot that's good um but yeah, honestly, man, the future looks good for me. I, you know, life yeah. is definitely a lot more easier. Uh, I don't get, I don't explode. I don't go from zero to 100 like I used to. Right. A lot of times, you know, um, I'm not as reactive. You know, I'm, not, I'm actually, I'm not reactive at all. My body, the best way I can explain it is my body was in uh, fight or flight for the mm. last 34 years. And the right. second I got uh, the 100 dose of testosterone, was when my body went into calm. So my future really looks like, you know, uh, Caitlin and I definitely want to leave California. Mm. Um, and I'll tell you the backstory on that. Um, but we want to leave California, uh, maybe buy some land, maybe 40, 50 acres, wow. um, and just kind of live life. As far as work-wise, man, I'm done committing to corporate companies. I'm just going to work and save as much as I can right. and really just travel. You know, travel. We uh, the, one of the things about client felt is I can't have kids, so that's out the window. But I'm totally open to adopting. You know, I just wish I could pick my kid out. You know, you can be like, y'all want that one right there. He <laughs> don't, you know, don't want a don't black man having a Chinese kid. Like, it's just, I'm, I'm gonna love him. I'm gonna love him. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> so we, you know, she doesn't want kids, um, oh, okay. and it, it works for both of us. So really. My future is just wherever the energy takes me, man, wherever God got planned for me. Because obviously the route that I was taking, he had other plans. So I'm just I'm, I'm really trying to take a step back and really listen uh, right. to where he's trying to direct me. Well, then again, that route you took probably put you where you're at now. Even that's though it didn't true. work out, you know what I'm saying? You know, without the route you took, you will never met the girl you with now. And that's a good uh, point. It, and she would probably never tell you to go get your teeth tested. You know what I'm saying? So yep. it might look bleak sometimes, bro. But hey, yeah. you know, you stick with it, man, and let God lead you, man. You you come out on top, man. Trust me. You. Oh man. yeah, indeed, man, indeed. So uh, the backstory about Caitlin, how we met real fast, is um, so we yeah, lived in the meet, man. I don't know. Let me. And so did she slide in your DM, brother? 
No, nah, Shane Slider. I met Caitlin two weeks before uh, Pastor Cal told me I was getting married to a stranger. Oh, that's right. Uh, yep. We met at the park. Actually, my dog kissed her cat. She's a cat woman. Yeah, she has a cat. She was walking mm -hmm. her cat. Her cat was in a tree. And she's like, hey, can you stay back a little bit? My cat's aggressive towards other dog. I was like, cool. Her cat jumped out of the tree, walked up to Maya. Maya laid down and her cat put her nose on Maya's nose. And, you know, Caitlin was like, you know, and I was just like, yeah, she like cats, you know. Yeah. Um, but we've lived in the last three states together. So when I was living in Portland, we were two neighborhoods apart from each other back in 2008. Wow. When we lived in Colorado, she lived in Denver. I lived in Denver. She was 20 minutes from me. I was in downtown Denver. And then when I wow. moved to San Diego, we were one neighborhood away from each other. It was just meant to happen, brother. It was just meant to happen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is awesome. We appreciate you um, coming in and telling your story. I want to say this. What did I, I know you had to tell your family, you know what I'm saying? What did what was that conversation like when you had to tell them? My mom took it really hard. Uh, she blamed herself. Um, wow. you know, she felt like it was something that, you know, she should have caught, you know, but, you know, my doc, my doctor, myself explained it to her that, you know, most men don't catch it until they're in their thirties. And typically when people do catch it is when they're trying to, you know, produce a baby and they're trying right. to figure out why they can't produce a baby eventually. And then when yeah. they figure out why it's because they have client filters. So she, she was beating herself up, you know, a bit, but I told her, I said, Mom, don't you straight. I said, you know, now we know. Um, now we can do something about it, you know. And so it's definitely eased her mind now that she's starting to see change because she she said what I said, she was like, Black people don't get that. And mm -hmm. today, she said, I'm um, being honest with you, uh, I'm gonna cut you out. I had never heard of it before until you brought it up. Me neither. Yeah, me so neither. By you coming on here and telling the people what you dealing with is gonna bring awareness to this situation you have, okay. 100%. Yeah, but go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all good. I've seen people in high school that look like me that worked out with me and pr produce the same results. So I agree, it's going to bring more awareness to you know for parents that has that you know have young boys to go get them take a you know take a you know look that right um, because it's really hard to miss. I mean, it's it's, it's easy to miss. I'm sorry. Right. Um, but yeah, she she she's good now. She's taking it well. Uh, she's going through this journey with me. They see more changes than I do, um, but at least, you know, I guess I'm making changes, I guess. But she's cool. Well, uh, and, your, you? and your brother? Yes, I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. Take my stuff. So, man. yes. Take my stuff, man. He took, Donnell, my brother yeah. took it really hard, actually. So, you guys know Donnell raised me. He, Donnell mm -hmm. was real hard on me. When I say this dude was hard on me, right. like, my boy was hard. If I slipped up, I got my butt beat. Mm. you know, for anything. And right. so he took it really hard because he, he sort of felt bad with his approach. And I told him, I said, man, you, you did what you thought was right. You thought you, mm. you was doing it. You know, you do, you, you did what you knew. Um, but he's definitely, he sees the change. I think the relationship that we've been trying to build for the past 34 years is happening now. Okay. You know, we can have those mature conversations. He can give, he gives me constructive feedback, you know, and I can just be like, okay, you know, and he noticed the, the personality, the attitude change. He definitely noticed uh, physical change. So, man, when I say this dude has called me every single day since I've been di diagnosed, every single day, Courtney, Eddie, wow. every mm -hmm. single day. He's like, what's up, man? I'm like, you, I'm Ninja, you just called me yesterday. I'm doing the same <laughs> thing I was doing yesterday. <laughs> uh, that's, that's good to hear, he, man. Yeah. That's good y'all getting that relationship y'all wanted, man. That's great. Yeah, to hear. Super supportive. So I'm going to ask the uh, <clears throat> a question that I know the audience going to want to know, and I'm sure I can ask this question, and I'm sure you can answer it because now it is public. You know, people know. About, uh, what's her name? Alexis um, said on one of the shows. She's gay. She said she's bisexual. <laughs> that. Gay. She's gay. She said she's <laughs> bisexual. So... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, all right, you, congratulations. How you feel about yeah, that? She, you know, she you she kind of came out. You with. you you were married to her, so you know what I'm saying. What? She, what yeah, I, I, man, I, I promise you, I forgot y'all was married, man. I for real, I forgot. I did. So your ex-wife says she's bisexual. What? How you yes. feel? You know, I was proud of her when she came out. I knew about it. You know, she actually That's told funny. me. Um, 
the exact moment she told me it w was at the honeymoon suite and uh, what she told me, uh, she was like, hey, I just want to let you know that I am bisexual. Um, and she, you know, she let me know that her parents, sisters, you know, eat, although they had a close relationship, nobody knew, you know, wow. but like her, her close friends. Um, and she expressed, you know, uh, um, the toxic relationship she was in in the past that she had went through. And I didn't judge her. It just, it just right. it wasn't my, it wasn't my secret to tell. Right. Um, and so when she came out and she's like, oh, just the new, you know, like that's, that's not my style. You know, right. Like, right now, don't get me wrong. You you do me wrong. I will in the past. You do me wrong. You're a change man. Yeah. <laughs> Look, before I came for blood, but um, it, it just wasn't my secret to tell, you know. Right. Um, and when she came out about it, you know, I was just like, good for you. You know, so, yeah. But, yeah, I knew the whole time. Did, did did it when she told you did it affect how you felt in that moment yes. being married to her oh hell yeah yes okay. uh it definitely it affected the relationship but i never really expressed it in fact mm -hmm. i because her, her and my producer had such a tight relationship i questioned that i'm just gonna be no. straight up i okay. did i questioned that i mean they had a tight relationship like they could talk about anything if we had an argument, you know, somehow, you know, Alexis and her talk about it, do whatever. Like they just had a different kind of relationship where I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm it's questionable. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, I can't prove that, but I definitely had my doubts. Right. Uh, when she would go to the club, that that played a, a role in her going to the club, you know, because I knew she was attracted to both sex. Um, mm. And she, she can say she don't like attention, but call it how I said, you know. That's yeah. why, you know, I was more worked up because Mav left out so much. Now, Mavs didn't know that she was bisexual, mm. um, but a lot of information, like her being a bottle girl, they left that stuff out. So the, a lot of the reactions you guys saw were for different stuff and not right. the same thing, but they edited it. They did their job. They, I got produced is what I tell yeah. people. They did their job. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's pretty much what it was. I, I questioned it, but a lot of my emotions definitely had a lot to do with her being bisexual and wanting to party and knowing that she liked both sex, you know. So mm -hmm. uh what's this guy name that was married to the uh him him and Jason got to it? Nate. Justin? Nate, yeah. When the last time you talked to Nate, man, you have you heard from Nate? Uh is he still in California or is he <laughs> so, moved on to something? Uh yeah, Nate's still in California. Well, between me. Alexis, Ben, and Nate live a maximum of uh, two minutes apart from each other. Okay. Literally. I hadn't talked okay. to Nate. Uh, no, actually, I lied. Me and Nate ran into each other after the reunion. Um, was it the reunion? I think it was the reunion. Same place where we originally met, and we chopped it up. We had a conversation. We laughed about it. He was just like, <laughs> he said, man, I ain't know you. I ain't know you can get like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, it, it, that, that, that hood come out a little bit, you know, you, you press the right button. But he was like, you know, I respect him because he was like, ain't no point of beefing and having animosity towards each other. He said, right. it's going to be on TV for the rest of our life. Our, our mm -hmm. kids going to laugh at it. Let's squash this shit now. And that's exactly what we did. That's now, we great. don't talk. You right. know, right. I think if we saw each other in public, we would be cordial and converse, you know. Um, but no, nah, we don't we don't have a relationship. Me and Ben don't have a relationship. Um me and Mitch don't have a relationship. The only person I have a close relationship with is Miguel. So Miguel's doing pretty good for himself, then. Uh. Yeah, man, Miguel's doing really well, man. Um, okay. He's loving it. He's he's got a great job that he's working. Uh, we work out about three days a week. Um, we uh we we stay we we stay connected. We really just talk about what we want to do in the future. You know, no. uh, how yeah. to get out of California and save money because it ain't cheap. Yeah, that's what people keep saying. Is he still into uh is, is he still into D and D? Yes. Yes, he, he is. is. He's still into D and D. Okay. He's in D, he's in, he's into D and D. Yes, he no, is. D &D is. Some of that um Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. No. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, we do know, you know, of course, you know, him and um uh, what's her name? Um Stasha. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. Oh, Miguel. 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 Yeah. And um, yeah. what's her name? The last name. Lynn. What's her name? Lindy. His ex wife, Lindy. Yeah, they got a divorce. Lindy. So, yeah, we do we do know about that insurance girl. Oh, so, yeah. she was insurance. Insurance girl. 
Yeah. 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 Season run together so much, man. God. I thought <laughs> yeah, she was the last name, girl. He want that insurance, and so he was like, yeah. mm-mm, get get somebody else to do it. So yeah, um she on Medicaid now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Justin. So but it, it was so good to, you know, talk to you, chop it up and all that stuff or whatever. So we appreciate, you yeah, know. Man. We appreciate you, you know. Come on here and tell the world what's going on with you and about your yeah. you know situation and uh, and I wish you nothing but the best, brother. For real, real talk. I wish you nothing but the I best. Appreciate it, man. I, I yeah. appreciate it. Uh, definitely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity again to come on your platform and just kind yeah. of share my story. Uh, I felt like it was important uh, and it was definitely relevant, you know, to what sure. you guys saw and what was was happening. So yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, no problem. Oh, so you're welcome. When, when you get when you propose to your, <laughs> to your lady, make sure you hit us up. And it's gonna be a while. He said, "Gonna be a while." Yeah, don't you know, it. actually, we, we we talked about it briefly, and she was like, "Baby, when you get become debt free, then you can propose." And I was like, "That's fair. I'm with it." That's fair. Hey, she she she's hey. a small woman. Yeah. And she so, is yeah, well, yeah, that's good. So yeah, um, she looking at you know the future financially, and you know a lot of people don't take that that route, and a lot of people don't do that, you know, because yeah. hey, um, but yeah, we appreciate you coming on. Is there anything else you want to say? How can people reach out to you? Because you know you may get some DMs and people questioning if they have it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. They don't know the symptoms, and they may you know want to talk to you personally. So how can people contact you? They can reach me out. Uh, they can reach out to me on my Instagram. <laughs> like, man, I didn't even hear that. I muted it. That's fair. You did that good. I'm smooth. Uh, <laughs> now, nah, people can reach out to me on Instagram. Just type in Justin Hall Mavs on Google, and my Instagram will pop up. Uh, I'm Caitlin, and I actually are doing a podcast together um, because since she, you know, discovered it. Um, she want to ask me a bunch of questions that she know people might have so we can kind of get okay. that information out there. Uh, but yeah, you guys can reach out to me, you know, via Instagram. Don't reach out to me on Facebook. I ain't going to ask you because I don't have a messenger down there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, when is it, would the, is, have y'all named the podcast no, or? it will be and uh, what time? Oh yeah. the um, We, we, I've definitely, I've named, it's called um, Let's Talk Men and Emotions. And it's just a say it, it was originally a safe platform for men to be vulnerable. Uh, but I'm always curious about others' perspective. Um, one of the topics I want to talk about is uh, Black women and Black men and their emotions, you know, uh, and how that can be better reciprocated, you know, versus, you know, men being seen as weak or whatever they, they're they being seen as. So, but as far okay. as the episode with me and Caitlin, uh, it's, to, it's to be determined, but definitely within the next 14 days, for sure. Okay. And that can be found on YouTube because I do follow your YouTube on that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sure so say it one more time so people can follow on um, YouTube. Let's talk men and emotions. Let's okay. talk men and emotions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good yeah, deal. Just look for the when, when you look for it, just look for the sexy guy sitting in a chair like this. That's okay, me. Okay. All right. <laughs> Boy, you feeling yourself, man. So oh. listen. <laughs> Listen, so I did, you know, before we go, because I did um watch the one where you had Gil on there from Married at First Sight previous season. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, when you and and I think it was another guy on there, so y'all were all talking, you know, about, you know, me and emotions and I all that stuff. I think you had stuff. Rasheed on there, too. I don't know. You had Rasheed on there? Uh, I, I had Mike from, mm, I had, um, oh. Mike from Boston. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But my favorite one is definitely with Gil, uh, just because mm-hmm. he kind of created a different perspective. But at the same time, he made a solid point. He says, when men compliment men, we compliment accessories. Now, hey, man, that's a great hat you got on, man. Who lined you up? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I bet I said that from day one when that happened, man. I said, man, man, that outfit you got on fly, bro. Where you get them pants from? Where you get that yep. shirt from? You know, yeah. I said, no, man, we ain't going to. We visited that, but yeah, I said that from day one. It's just weird to me. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that was a good that was a good podcast. So yeah, it was good to listen yeah. to it and stuff. So yeah, um, that was good that you kind of that you was able to connect with Gil, um, because I know I'm not sure if you watching this married at first sight, but yeah, he was on there with one girl, no, child, honey. Dumb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and she thought that she was gonna talk to that grown man, honey. Yeah, he was not gonna pull another girl. He said, "Man, I, I'll talk to you later." Click. 
basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Cold world. It was a cold world. <laughs> yeah, so he was here for it, but. Yeah, Gil, Gil is fam, man. He uh when I said that interview with him was like just natural. Like really? we chopped it up, you know, after the call. Like it, it was just real easy. You know, I had my homie um Roman on there. He had, you know, a great perspective. Uh I really enjoyed it. I definitely uh plan on inviting him back again. Uh he's mm-hmm. got a lot of requests to come back. Him and right. my first interview with this uh this modeling dude named um Paul Saints, uh, he's got Paul a lot of requests Saints. back as well. Okay, cool beans. Yeah, cool the beans. ladies love Gil, so yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, um, what you call it? LLJ, L Cool J, L L Cool J. Little Gil, Gil. So yeah, that was pretty smooth. Yeah, well, oh, thank you. Yeah, J, um, Gil can um use that. You know what I'm saying? And make sure mm-hmm. you pay my money off of using What's that? that. Using what? L-L-G. I just said L oh. G. I said the latest love G. You put that together. I L G. That's it. Just mine, man. It's Whatever. Mine. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. All right. On that note, um, just yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you again so much for this and um bringing awareness and enlightening people on um you know somebody else may have this condition and this syndrome. So um and and good that you are on a better path. So you know. Hopefully, you know, people will watch this video. If you guys are watching this, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to the channel, of course. And make sure that you um, um, share this with, you know, other people, men or or parents that, you know, that may be interested in. Because I think a lot of um, males, you know, need to be tested. Actually, I think a lot of men should be aware of this uh, this, uh, condition and uh yeah. and so they can know what's going on with their bodies you know as especially mm-hmm. black men you know black men yep. are scared to go to the doctor you know and not this one Chad. <laughs> that was my problem that was literally my problem I, right i was afraid to go to the doctor it's like when the last time you go to, went to the dog i said man the last time i needed to and I, and I and i get why black people are scared to go to the doctor from the history we had to deal with back mm-hmm. in the day you know what i'm saying i understand that but now, yeah, you got to go to the doctor. You got to know what's going on with your body, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, I'm glad, you know, hopefully somebody watches the video, give them the courage to go to, to the doctor to get themselves checked. And, you know, like I said, this will hopefully bring awareness to the situation, to your conditions. And, uh, and you know, like I said, once again, brother, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me as always. Oh man, no doubt. No on doubt. that note, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. As we say at the end of every video, don't forget to go with God and let God go with you. I always put God first. Do see. Hey!